Hmm. The angle kind of works on this. Ah, nice. Reading Ramble on the go. Ankle's kind of feeling okay. Crisscross applesauce at the NYU. Did you know that? Cool. Welcome to the August Reading Ramble. Might be a day or two late. I don't know how I'm gonna get around to editing this. It's been a month. It has been a month. Yeah, not a bad one, honestly. In regards to reading, I have almost no conception of an outline for this. Oh, uh, it's great. Dendrobites Notion, current reading ramble notes. We have six, seven things on here. Let me, let me check the to-do list here. Reading list, August books, finished four, two ongoing, but that's actually four ongoing. So those will be next month's books. <laughs> Have you ever driven in San Francisco during a rush hour? It's an experience. Rivals Boston, I'm not gonna lie. I only got honked at once and that was my fault. Okay, first book, Boss Fight Books Chrono Trigger. I have the book physically, didn't bring it with me. The intro I really liked because it seemed like it had a really good feel. It had a really good ethos. Uh, I have to finish this video in about 26 minutes. <laughs> the the writer of it was, I guess, a, a translator of some sorts. He taught in Japan for a while. I related with a lot of that. He talked about some, some stuff at the beginning on connecting with video games as a kid. But it wasn't as good. I think I, maybe I set my expectations too high, but I don't also, I'm current, comparing to the Spunk, Spelunky boss fight books, it wasn't as good. I really liked that Spelunky went into the mechanics of the game and was structured that way. The Chrono Trigger one was a bunch of like, Fascinating ideas in different small essays that I feel like could have been focused in on one one thing. My favorite part was the 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 author talked to the two translators of Chrono Trigger, the, the first one who did the original translation and then the one who did the DS translation and kind of how they work with the cultural bounds and sort of had to factor in like space usage because you could only fit a certain number of letters or, or, or characters, I should say. And so a character in Japanese can mean a lot more than one single letter in English. And you kind of got the impression that language could really make or break a game. One example that, I, that stuck with me was the, the enemies in Chrono Trigger, uh, Flea, Ozzy, and I can't believe I'm forgetting the other one. I'm sorry, editing Mark, throw it up. They were named like mayonnaise, pickle or something in Japanese, but the names wouldn't have translated over because there's some pun going on. There are puns going on. So the translator chose these musical artist references. And then the end. The end slapped. This is gonna come in when I talk about Shoe Dog in a minute. But there was this quote, I think I can pull it up because I sent it somewhere, it's on my phone, but guess who's filming on his phone? The way I'm gonna paraphrase that, I'll throw it up, but oftentimes, you know, you look back at the good times and you think, oh man, those days were so great. I wish, you know, someone could have told me they were the good times when I was there. In a lot of ways over the past month, two months, I've been trying to live life as if I'm, I'm coming back to relive it, right? someone's saying, hey, you're in the good old days, enjoy it. You know, do we have the energy to live life as if we're we're flashing through it again? You know, life flashes before your eyes when you die kind of thing. Do we have the mental energy, fortitude and strength to maintain that kind of attitude as we go through life? You know, this morning I woke up, very little sleep, but I went on my run, I felt good. And I just got this, this notion of, I'm gonna go through today as if I came back to live it. I really forget to remind myself of that a lot of the time. For some reason, discipline equals freedom is on here. Did I finish it this month? Oh yeah, I finished discipline equals freedom. That was very long ago. There was some practical stuff at the end that was that was good. Just like, you know, what your workout routine should be. Just do something. I really like that. I wanna read Extreme Ownership, same same author. I think you wrote it with someone else. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting over injury myself and it's it has some notions of like, you know, do as much as you can. I'm working on mobility. I don't know. I don't have much to say about that. Most of my thoughts are probably in last month's reading ramble. Ah. Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Whew. So my dad recommended me this book uh, and I kind of threw it on the list and I forget exactly why. I think it came up in conversation again. And then I was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna read it. I love autobiographies and memoirs. So here we go. Love this book. I told myself to go through the highlights that I made, but my camera's partially on my Kindle. Uh, and also that'll take a while. So Phil Knight, if you don't know, uh, I didn't know started Nike. He created, he's the CEO and founder of Nike or co-founder, I get technically. Just the whole book tells his journey from start to where he got what he calls his crazy idea, capital C, capital I, and where he went to his end, uh, all the way up until Nike's IPO. It's internal public offering, something public offering. And it was just the ups and the downs were insane. The storytelling was immaculate. And I think the messages at the end were super, super important. The start, 
you know, he talks about going out of his basement <clears throat> and he kind of, he only touches on like, we moved offices here, we moved offices there. The first one was super dingy. It, he really digs into like, he traveled the world at the very start. You know, he went to Asia and Japan and the whole thing was getting Japanese shoes into the American market. The whole thing about traveling, that's why I'm here in San Francisco right now, uh, or at least part of the reason. And yeah, I just, that, that part hit me. And so I kept reading, I kept reading and I was engrossed in this because this whole time, He's founding this company. You don't know what happens next. He doesn't know what happens next. Every single moment there's, we're gonna go under, but they keep trying. And there was a cool theme of like being honest throughout. Toward the end, it was deeply personal and very real. I think having read the story, you know, in only a couple of days as I did, and then reading the end made it all the more impactful. There were some quotes there at the end. And the thing that really stuck with me is that his secret regret is that he would not be able to live all of that over again. It's such a widely known saying of like, oh, you're so young, like better enjoy the days. I wish I could go back and live when you're young, whatever. And I know the day is gonna come. Like I, I know that lesson. I don't understand it yet. I don't think I understand it yet. There are many lessons I feel like I know, but I haven't understood. And so I'm trying to make the most of these things because you know, there are, there are times at summer camp or you know, the, the friends I made in New York City and parkour, like those times I've tried to make the most of and I'm trying to step up my making the most of game, enjoying you know, this new job and all the challenges it presents. There's gonna come a day where I probably want to live it all again. And I can't do that. So I'm trying to have the attitude of living life as if I've come back to live it. But coming back to that Chrono Trigger quote, it's like, do we have the energy to do that all the time? The answer is no, I don't think so at least. But there's someone I wanna be. I talked about this in my Japanese N5, N5 vlog, N5, nice. It's hard to really appreciate everything that's happening around you when it's happening, uh, especially because each of the smaller parts are a part of a bigger whole. Because of this book, when people say like, you've got your whole life ahead of you, I gained a little bit of a deeper understanding. I'm 22, I don't think I've ever, confirm my age, I don't care at this point. Phil Knight was, I think 23 when he started this traveling or maybe he's 25. It's just an immensely personal journey and I have my whole life ahead of me, you know? Everything's a foundation. Could I have started a game five years before? Yeah, there was a thought that always plagued me of like, oh, if only I started this two years ago. But now I'm coming to terms with that. If only I had gotten more serious about Japanese a year ago. Well, here we are. You know, it's not about age, but it's about the experiences that kind of come with that age in a way. I don't think age and maturity, you know, they correlate, but everyone who's 20 is not gonna be mature as everyone else who's 20. But someone who's 20 will not be as mature as everyone else who's 20. It was a great book. Uh, you know, he doesn't really go into sports at all. I'm also getting into running. That was probably, that word is so tough. That was probably another reason why I, you know, picked up this book. I didn't just leave it on the list. It was because I've been really running lately. My shin splinters are getting better. My left leg is getting there. I post every morning on my Instagram story, a bunch of them. Uh, he doesn't like go into the sports or the business, but you know, if you're an entrepreneur or want to make a business, read this book. If you want to just get an appreciation for the span of someone's life, this book is a great way to do it. That's what autobiographies are to me is people, you know, you see what people think is valuable in their lives, um, both the highs and the lows. I, I could talk about that book for ages. Uh, so if you, if you read it or something, leave a comment. We can start a little discussion. Join the Discord, it's, we can start to talk about it. Definitely one of my favorite autobiographies or memoirs, it's technically a memoir. And then there's Ready to Run. This is the book about running. Surprise. It was optimized for e-reading because there was a bunch of licks in there. Uh, and if you're a runner or not, I think this is a great read for why you should be doing mobility. It has some sample plans at the end, but it just drills in the body. It drills in the logic, the fact that your body's a mechanism. You need to take care of your body. I would go out and run and then do some stretches, whatever. That bit me in the butt or the shoulder or the right ankle, depends on how you look at it. But you know, every morning now I'm doing at least these basic articular rotations and already I can feel my ankles a little meh, the sprain is is recovering very well. You know, my shoulder has full range of motion. And when I run, I need to, you know, start strengthening the anterior tibialis muscles on my leg. I can sit cross-legged here and it actually doesn't feel that bad. I mean, I'm leaning against something, but um, yeah, soon I will get back to parkour. Uh, it'll just take time. Honorable mention to either or, haven't read it, but I was at Barnes and Noble. I ordered a book, but they haven't called me yet. At least I have a receipt. I picked up this book, Works of Love by Kierkegaard. I don't have much to say about it at the moment, but I saw it and I, I read, uh, deep within every man, there lies the dread of being alone in the world. So I picked it up naturally. And it's just, it's philosophy. I am what, 47 pages in. Uh, for this one, I'm a lot more 
driven to finish it versus, you know, like either or make it into a little fan uh, desk for my fan. Yeah, uh, if you want to read philosophy, we can discuss in the Discord as, as you go through it. Uh, that'd be cool. You know, try and start something with these videos if, if there's enough audience for that. Uh, Japanese. So I'm like 4% through Toradora. Uh, what I've been doing is, I'll throw up a picture, I guess, because it's, again, stacked on my under my phone. Every other day I read a Japanese short story and answer the questions that follow. And then the days I don't do that, I read at least one page of Toradora. Every day it has been one page. And this is cool. This has been really cool because the short stories, uh, I'm comprehending a lot of them. The grammar, and this is something I'm experimenting with, you know, Boon Pro, how best to really internalize the grammar. I'm, I'm getting a lot of the vocab words, thanks to the N5 Boon Pro grammar and the Wani Kani vocab, definitely. But the, you know, the, picking up the grammar is tough, but I'll be reading through the books and, you know, maybe I can throw a clip in here of when I was trying to read a book several months ago. I think it might've been, it would've been start of the year, I think. Doni hanashi te hanashi te <laughs> and compared to now, uh, you know, it was it was no problem. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take the book. So this is it. Um, and by no problem, I don't mean comprehension, but just going through a story. So I get self conscious about my accent. I'm sorry. Aru fuyu no asa, watashi wa kofi o nonde imashita. And then so on and so forth. I don't know. Doshiten desu ka? To watashi wa kikemashita sono otoko wa shu shizuka ni to imashita. So I can get some of the grammar points and it's cool seeing them uh, from Boom Pro. And the stories are very generic. Uh, and then in, in Toradora, I'm able to pick up enough vocab. So I'm like, oh, this is where they talk about the, the bird, the pet bird. Um, and like, oh, Ryuji, that's his name. Uh, so this is how they use the kanji. These are the phonetic kanji for Ryuji. That's been also just a nice way to be like, okay, you know, I'm reading, my speed of reading is getting better. Um, for the N3 I'm taking in December, that's gonna be super important. This, this reading, speed of reading, not only pronunciation, but also comprehension. So I don't, I don't, I don't wanna be stopping at the end of everything and being like, okay, te form, and then this is the one for to do in advance, and then you got the polite particle O, so you've got the uh, gozaimasu at the end, and like, I don't, I don't wanna do that. I'll have to do that for a while. I'll probably have to do that in the test to some degree, but I don't wanna let that be the slow, most slowing factor, so to speak. That, that's it. <laughs> that's how every single one of these reading rambles works. Uh, so yeah, works of love, Japanese short stories are going. I'm reading The Chalk Circle Man as well. Uh, I keep forgetting the author's name, it's a French book. My mom gave me this fifth, the seventh one in the series like two years ago and I loved it. And then I was like, wait, this is the seventh one? So I got the first one, it's pretty short. I'm like 30% through it already. I don't really know what else I'm reading. Works of Love, Chalk Circle Man. I don't really know if the Japanese counts. I'll keep either or on the list, so to speak, and Toradora on the list. If you wanna pick up any of those books, you can talk about them as we read them on the Discord or something. I don't know. Whatever freaking works. Hopefully next video is the Seattle part two vlog. I have all the footage, I just need to edit it. It's a lot of stuff and I don't know, I'm just out. Making the most of moments, making sure life doesn't uh, pass you by. Traveling is, is weird. Yeah, that's it. Join the Discord, follow me on Instagram if you have any questions. Why would you follow me on Instagram if you have any questions? Leave a comment if you have any questions, honestly. Love to give book recs. I'm, I haven't read about any productivity books in a while, but Time Management for Mortals has been recommended to me twice now. So I figured that should be a good one to check out. So thanks for watching. Have a good one. Uh, make sure to read this month. Definitely hydrate a lot. And welcome to freaking September. Take it easy. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one.